So in ice fishing, there's so many different techniques and there's so many different species and so many different variables. I like to be fully prepared with everything I should ever need in an ice fishing situation. So I kind of want to just run you through this box really quick here. Like I said, everything I need in one spot all the time. So this is nice. I got rubber straps here. I keep a tip up on there. It's always kind of with me on the go just in case I need to deploy a dead stick. A couple random things in here. This is a nice tall tub so I can fit a lot of weird stuff. All my panfish gear fits in this one box. Spoons, tons of different sizes and colors of tungsten, all in one box, which is really nice. It fits in my pocket here, but it's also always with me. Got a bait puck, of course. I can go in my other pocket. Headlamp, underwater camera. Underwater camera is a big deal for helping ID fish, for helping ID vegetation types and depths and, and uh, transition zones, which can be really overlooked in ice fishing. So underwater camera, a little compact one like that is great to have. Then I got my safety picks too, kind of just always with me. Um, but getting to the boxes here, I really have faith in using a waterproof box. Uh, one thing with ice fishing is you're kind of changing temperatures a lot. Say I'm in the house, I go out of the house, I bring my stuff in to thaw for the night. A lot of condensation can build in there. I just want to stop it from getting in there altogether, so I like to use waterproof cases. And these are little 3500 size ones. They're more for my terminal tackle stuff. Hooks and sinkers and bobber stops and bobbers and spare treble hooks, a bunch of stuff like that. This is a 3600 size, and this is completely dedicated to lipless baits, essentially. Um, lipless baits have really caught on in ice fishing lately. Again, I'm kind of a collector, so I like to have a bunch of different sizes and varieties there. Lipless baits have a lot of drawing power, so I like to have those with me. Um, but they don't really fit in other boxes all that well, so I kind of like to have them all in one. And then here's the uh, pride and joy of my life, I guess. Like I said, I'm a collector of spoons. And uh, with this big investment with my spoons, again, I got a waterproof sealed case here. 3,700 size. It's the deep size. And what I've done is taken some foam and kind of cut it to fit into the box here. And then with the permanent marker, I've notched out, you know, slots. And then with just with like a utility knife, you just make a little slot and each of these spoons just kind of goes in and comes right back out again. So this is something that some guys are doing on the ice, which I think is totally worth it because it keeps my finishes clean on there. They're not clanging around. Hooks aren't always dulling up bashing around into each other and so I can kind of quickly ID brands and colors and sizes but they all stay in this box really good and uh, don't go anywhere. So like I said kind of my obsession with spoons. Uh, I use them all over the place all over the country different kinds of fish um, so I like to have a dedicated spoon box. That being said everything fits in this box really nicely. And then I'll go through kind of the outer stuff, which really isn't much, but one very important thing, um, and that's line, having different line with you. So I've just got a little thing here with a couple. Again, I like to experiment with brands. And of course you have to have different sizes. And a lot of times, if I'm not fishing with straight fluorocarbon, I'll use it as a leader material. Um, and different fish species and different uh, attitudes of fish call for different thicknesses of your fluorocarbon. So again, I like to have a lot of room in here so I can experiment with liter material size, you know, and then I've got it just in case I need to spool up on the ice because a lot of times that'll happen when you know, you're fishing in a deep basin and you get a knot in your line or something, you got to re-spool on the fly. Uh, and then next point on that is I just got some scissors and some pliers and then electrical tape. Having spare electrical tape, like I said, just in case you need to put a reel on a rod. Sometimes you need to switch reels on the go real quick. So that's kind of my box, big deep box. I've always got everything I need with me at all times. I'm an avid ice angler and this is kind of the solution that I've come up with.